Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my weekly fly tying video for, I believe this is the 11th of June, 2019. And uh, I was supposed to have a trip today, but uh, got pushed back till tomorrow, so I actually have time to do a video this week. Um, I do not think I will get one out next week. Um, we'll see, but I, I, I've been mentioning this in previous videos that I didn't think I was going to have time to do videos here in June, but unfortunately my June hasn't been as busy as I'd like. Anyway, what I'm going to be doing here is a uh, very traditional looking streamer pattern called a stainer ducktail, and this is very apropos for, for this time of year, um, <clears throat> particularly for my trip coming up. I uh, was going to be a walk wade in Yellowstone Park, but Basically, the only things that are fishable are the fire hole and the gibbon, and it's going to be crowded. And so I actually talked the guy into doing a private lake trip because we've got access to a new private, well, uh, we've got new access to a private lake that's been closed for about 10 years. Um, and what's in this lake are perch and brown trout. And the perch certainly are, are prey for the brown trout. And uh, so I went looking for a pattern that would imitate the juvenile perch and uh, this is what I what I found. This is, a, like I said, a stainer ducktail, and uh, pretty traditional looking streamer, with the exception of the fact that the wing is made out of uh, mallard flank rather than you know your traditional bucktail, and that's where the the ducktail comes in. Um, just another quick note before I tie this. I've been getting requests to tie the prom queen salmon fly, and uh, one reason I'm not doing it is, frankly, I, I just don't need any right now. I don't actually use that fly all that often anymore, and they don't sell all that well. And so uh, I've been kind of trying to play with it a little bit here to change it up some and get it to work a little better. And uh, once I get that kind of taken care of, I'll go ahead and do a, a video of the Prom Queen probably next year sometime. Um, I did it at a fly tying demo in... Uh, Colorado, I have a feeling the fellow who's asking me for the video saw me do it there, and uh, that was more to demonstrate the technique I was using for um, tying the body on it. Anyway, so back to the stainer ducktail. Um, the hook is a 3XL streamer hook, size 6 to 14. This one's an 8. I suspect the 10 is going to be a little better, but um, when I sat down to do the video, this is the hook I had out already. Um, and also, it probably works a little better for video purposes because it's bigger. The thread is 6-0 black, and then my tail is going to be orange hackle fibers. And I think I'm actually using a schlep and feather right now, um, but it doesn't matter. I mean, just you could probably use yarn and it'd be fine. And I want that to be half, maybe two-thirds the shank length. And then I'm going to tie that in. I'm just going to leave those ends, ends long there for now. My body on this fly is going to be dark olive, size medium chenille. And on the 10, I would really rather use small chenille if I had it, or I'd have to be really careful with my thread wraps. Anything smaller than a 10, in all honesty, I'd probably just use uh, either olive floss or dubbing or possibly just yarn. And then my rib on this fly is going to be um, holographic gold flashaboo. And the, uh, I'm sorry, holographic gold tinsel. And the, the standard pattern calls for just standard gold tinsel and... Uh, you know, being a traditional kind of fly, and I don't, I don't actually have any traditional uh, gold tinsel, so I'm substituting this holographic. I don't think it'll make any difference. So now what I'm doing is building a thread base there up towards the eye, and this fly doesn't have a huge head on it, and so I can get pretty close to the eye uh, with the body here. And so what I'm going to do then is just wrap that body forward. And one reason I selected this pattern, besides the fact that I, I sort of needed them, or hope I need them, um, I think this would be, I think this will crush fish in that lake. But anyway, I, uh, this is a good basic introduction to, you know, traditional streamers. Um, you know, it's actually quite easy to tie. And uh, the, uh, you know, you could, so on this particular fly, even if you just change colors, I think you could imitate a lot of different things, you know. Uh, for example, swap the tail and throat to red, uh, change the body to white chenille um, with a uh, silver rib, and then, again, use the standard uh, 
standard wing I'm using on this one, and you've got basically a little shad pattern. Um, you know, you could go go dark on the wing. Um, all sorts of changes you can make here. You could tie this almost like a black ghost. You know, it's just a good basic streamer for either trout or uh, I found on on uh, a blog somewhere that a guy was using these for for big panfish. So my throat is going to be the same orange hackle fibers as the tail there, and I want those to extend to about there. I tied them a little bit too long on the sample fly. So I'm going to get the distance I want and then come in and trim off the butt ends of those uh, fibers and then do a gathering wrap to get that where I want it and then bind it down. That looks about right. Could have made that one a little bit thicker probably, but I don't think the fish will care. Now my wing on this fly is going to be natural uh, mallard flank and I want it if possible to kind of curve over the fly. On this one I just stripped fibers off to tie the, the sample there and you can see that, that you know it's, it's not quite symmetrical. The fish won't care. Um, on this, so if I was tying these strictly for my production purposes what I would do is come in and I'd come in on the side of the feather and um, you know separate them out like that try to get the tips even and then strip that off and then just tie that in as a clump but since I'm doing this as a demonstration fly what I'm going to do instead is go into the center section of that feather like that and I'm actually going to tie that in um, over the top of the fly and that's going to be a lot more um, you know, symmetrical, pretty, you know, the fish aren't going to care, but uh, in terms of looking good, that's how to make that look good. Just like so. And so that's going to kind of, uh, when it's, you know, being stripped, that's going to kind of compress in the water and create sort of a veal over the back of that fly. So that's tied in, and I certainly will need to anchor that more than just with those thread wraps, but that's how it looks from above. I'm going to make a couple wraps back. Make a, you know, a traditional streamer like this usually has a pretty robust head. And so I'm going to make a couple wraps back, and that's going to help sort of curve that feather around the hook a little more, bind the feather in a little better. And then, you know, side, side effect is to make a slightly larger head there. And then my final thing here is I'm going to go ahead and whip finish. And then on this one, I'm actually using Loon Hard Head for head cement because I want a really thick, glossy head. Um, started using this stuff a lot more, not least because the colored versions are opaque, uh, or come out opaque anyway, and so I can uh, use it for eyes on things. Um, in fact, I, I tie a fair number of beadhead streamers, and I can use the red uh, to put eyes on a beadhead, which is super cool. But anyway, um, you know, whatever head cement you have is fine, but you want sort of a glossy head on that, so I'm, again, using Loon Hard Head. But again, there is a stainer ducktail, and uh, full disclosure, I've never actually used this fly, but it's it's an Idaho pattern that was developed as a uh, perch fry imitation, and given that on the check run to this this new private lake that just reopened, um, the fish were in the weed beds, and everything we caught. Well, I didn't catch because I wasn't there, but uh, the guys from the Parks Fly Shop caught was a fish eating a, uh, they were eating streamers in the weed beds, which I think suggests strongly that they were on perch. But uh, yeah, anyway, there's a stainer ducktail. Um, good traditional, you know, intro to, to traditional streamers. And again, like I said, I think it would make a lot of sense to change up these colors for whatever species you're going for. You know, change the wing color to a chartreuse dyed mallard, the body to yellow or chartreuse, um, you know, what have you. And you've got a crappie fly, for example. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, feel free to leave questions or comments in the box below.